from IIT Guwahati and after that she has completed her PhD from IIT IIT Guwahati itself and she has published many research paper and she is currently working on the material science. I'm really sorry because I am unable to find your bio data. So I'm just giving the information which currently. So I'm requesting you to kindly introduce yourself, Dr. Kansha. Will it be yes, okay? Sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute, sir. All right. Over to you. So let me start. Okay. So is my screen visible to everyone? So is my screen visible? Yeah, it is visible. Okay. So hello everyone, good evening. So, so it's a big opportunity for me that uh, Gorakhpur University has invited me to deliver a lecture. And it is a great opportunity to interact with all of you. My name is Dr. Kangsha. I've done my PhD from IIT Guwahati. So in, in 2020, 2020 basically. So during Corona times. So today I'm going to deliver my lecture on rare earth iron garnet gems and its application. Okay. So this is my email address. If you have any query after the lecture, you can straight away send me an email and ask your query. Okay. So let's start with the so this is the outline of my talk, today's talk. First, I'll give you the brief introduction about what is garnet and what is the material, and then what characterization techniques I have used, and what are the interesting results I have find out and I have analyzed that, and what is the future perspective or future aspects of the garnets. Okay, so let's start with a brief introduction. First of all, uh, can you see why I called it a gem? You can see the picture here. So this black one is the yttrium iron garnet. Some people use these garnets in the ornaments also. And the, the look diamond look like structure is nothing but the yttrium aluminum garnet. So garnet is nothing but rare earth iron oxide. That means if we mix rare, rare earth oxides and the iron oxides, we can, uh, we can form the structure of rare earth iron garnet. Okay, so let's start with the First of all, we know that we know few magnetic materials. So re basically in classes, we have studied only diamagnetic, paramagnetic and ferromagnetic material. But apart from these three magnetic materials, we have another one. We have anti-ferromagnetic materials and the ferrimagnetic material. So how will you define these material and on what basis you will say this material is a diamagnetic or this material is an anti-ferromagnetic or a ferromagnetic. So let's, so we can say, uh, suppose if we study their temperature properties, like how the magnetic, how the magnetic material behave with the temperature or how they are responding with the application of external magnetic field. That means if we apply some magnetic field, if we put these materials in the magnetic field, how they will respond. So let's see that. So this is another one. How does you, how does a magnetic material behave with a magnetic field? So first diamagnetic. So diamagnetic materials are nothing but they are, they are, the materials are, uh, which uh, those have completely filled shell. But if we apply some magnetic field, they try to oppose that magnetic field. That means whatever magnetic moment or they, they have that means zero basically or at the room temperature or without the magnetic field but when you apply the magnetic field they try to align in the completely opposite direction they oppose the magnetic field then we come to the paramagnetic one so paramagnetic have unfilled electrons uh, unfilled uh, shell in that case what happens if you apply some magnetic field they try to align in the magnetic field direction. But what happens because they are that much randomly oriented that if you apply some enough amount of magnetic field, they still try to align. That means not all the magnetic moment vectors try to magnetic moment vectors aligned in the applied magnetic field direction. So they have linear behavior with the 
applied magnetic field then it comes to the ferromagnetic materials so ferromagnetic generally we call magnetic materials start from the ferromagnetic ones so in that case what is ferromagnetic that means those material who have spontaneous magnetization that means if you don't provide any external magnetic field they still have their own magnetic moment so but uh, how will you say that without any application of magnetic field they have spontaneous magnetization so a magnetic a ferromagnetic materials basically have domains if you have studied in your masters or in bsc that magnetic let me show you one uh, with the figure one okay so basically in a magnetic material what happen you have domains and within these domains the moments are aligned completely aligned okay suppose it has two and two moments so they are aligned in the same direction and if it is again two moments they are aligned in the same direction but they in the different different domains they may have different orientation but if you apply the magnetic field these domains try to align in the direction of magnetic fields so that is why these materials have the saturation magnetic moment moment then we comes to the anti ferromagnetic moment anti ferromagnetic means you have again domains and they are completely same differently aligned but what happens they have net magnetic moment which is zero at the room temperature that means if you don't apply any magnetic field they have no spontaneous magnetization but you apply magnetic field again there these this moment try to align in the direction of magnetic field that means they possess some magnetic moment when you apply some magnetic field then it comes to the ferromagnetic this is something interesting one because is in in these two cases ferromagnetic and anti ferromagnetic they have the same material suppose this is iron and this is manganese but in this case you have iron and manganese that means two different sub lattices two different materials or you can say iron ke two different sub lattices can also have in that case one sub lattice is aligned in the parallel direction that means in the upward direction and other sub lattices align in the up, opposite direction so that is why they have anti parallel moment but they definitely have spontaneous magnetization at room temperature because of the different sub lattices and different magnetic moment of those two different sub lattices okay and if you apply the magnetic field definitely their other moment try to align in the direction of magnetic field okay so next move to the so this is the hysteresis curve or the magnetic uh, external magnetic field with the magne, uh, magnetic moment so paramagnetic shows the linear behavior and diamagnetic shows the definitely negative one and your ferromagnetic material shows the hysteresis curve where area under the curve shows how much magnetic moment or how much energy they have stored so and soft ferromagnetic materials they have co less coercive field and the uh, your uh, hard ferromagnetic materials have the large coercive field what is coercive field that which that means that materials need a very large amount of magnetic field to demagnetize itself okay so i have shown you the periodic table this is not the normal periodic table this periodic table defines or represents the different elements in the periodic table which one is the magnetic and which one is your non magnetic one see okay suppose you can see iron cobalt and nickel they are highly ferromagnetic that is why they have represented with the blue pink color and the other one in the rare earth one gd terbium and dipropium is again ferromagnetic but at the lower temperature that means below the room temperature okay so now let's come to the point we have chosen the ferrite materials so these days there are lots of materials in the in in your in your like uh, there so many people are working on different different materials but we have chosen the ferrite because of their some uh, fundamental properties like they can have permanent magnets they can be used in magnetic recordings microwaves optical sensor and electronic devices and etc so uh, first ferrites are of three types spinel garnets and hexaferrite so spinel have ab2o4 structure 
garnets have y3 fe5 o12 structure and hexafluorides have uh, different structure where, where it contains w type y type s type and they formed with the help of these s t and r blocks they are arranged in different different manners and they will form the different kind of hexafluoride so among all of these ferrites i have chosen the uh, yttrium iron garnet okay because of its cubic structure cubic nature and the uh, high ferrimagnetic transition temperature so this is the brief introduction or brief, brief overview what is yttrium iron garnet what is uh, structure look like or what is the space group so as i told you it has cubic structure the general formula represent the r3 fe2 fe3 o12 why i have written the fe2 fe3 that means that it has five iron elements but where two occupies the octahedral side and three occupies the tetrahedral side. I hope you know octahedral and tetrahedral side. Do you? Okay. Raise your hand if you say yes. Okay. One, two. Okay. Okay, very few of you know what is octahedral and tetrahedral side. Basically, what happens in the octahedral side, a single element uh, shared six uh, oxygen, oxygen atom with itself. And the tetrahedral one, single element uh, shares the four iron, uh, your oxygen elements that is called tetrahedral side. So then what is this R represent? R represent the rare earth element. So where rare earth element uh, shows, uh, occupies the dodecahedral side. Dodecahedral means it has 10 oxygen atoms shared the bond with the yttrium or rare earth atom. So then they, it has eight number of formula units per unit cell. What is number of formula units per unit cell? That means eight R3 Fe5O12 structure, if we take eight times R3 Fe2O12, it will make the complete cubic structure. So their most known garnets are yttrium iron garnet, gallonium iron garnet, gallonium, gallium garnet, okay? So you have maybe uh, heard about neodymium, yttrium aluminum garnet laser, very popular one. Most of the laser instrument has that laser. Okay, so this is the cubic structure. This is the alignment, magnetic spin alignment of uh, your uh, iron and different at uh, different site. Yttrium does not contain any magnetic moment. That is why I didn't show any uh, spin on the yttrium. And this is the simulated figure, which I have simulated from the Vesta software. It is uh, online available. If you want, you can uh, download it and you can uh, get the similar type of figure. So what is the importance of yttrium iron garnet and gallonium iron garnets? Okay, so definitely they have exhibit very high ferrimagnetic transition temperature. That means these materials straight away can be used at room temperature. They have very high saturation magnetization, which is 22 to 30 mu per gram. They are insulated at room temperature. They have low dielectric loss. And because of the low light dielectric loss and low eddy current, we can use in the uh, as a dielectric materials or capacitors because we want to switch our materials which has very low loss um, and thermal and st chemical stability. The important uh, property of the gadolinium is the it exhibit room temperature magnetic compensation. What is magnetic compensation? Let me, I, I'll come to that point. And so because of the magnetic composition, this material can show magnetocaloric behavior which is the one important properties, those materials which are suitable for the room temperature refrigeration, this type of behavior should be observed in those materials. Then these materials also have magnetoelectric and magnetodielectric properties at room temperature, which can be a suitable, which makes them a suitable candidate for energy efficient devices or energy harvesting devices. So what is magnetoelectric basically? One, materials shows the magnetic behavior, one is shows the electric behavior, and there is the yttrium iron garnet. You can change the electric property with the application of magnetic field, and you can change vice versa also. That means you can change the magnetic property by applying the electric, electric field, okay? So this is the property known as magnetoelectric properties. 
okay now let's come to the point what is magnetic compensation okay so magnetic compensation is that point where suppose we have two materials and and we have mixed them one magnetic material have has one magnetic element has 5 mu b and one magnetic material has 3 mu b so somehow there with if you uh, like apply some temperature to that material so somehow their magnetic moments at some particular point will become equal when the magnetic moment become equal of those two elements that point is called magnetic composition that means at that particular point your net magnetic moment of those, that material becomes zero as you can see in this figure the net magnetic moment of gadolinium iron garnet is zero near to the room temperature and because it is uh, zero at near to the room temperature that is why we can use it for magnetic refrigeration near the room temperature so what is happening since gadolinium as i have uh, earlier told you that in the periodic table gadolinium is ferromagnetic in the lower temperature and it has very high magnetic moment which is 7 bohr magneton 7 mu b so uh, in the lower temperature that means below compensation temperature your gadolinium is very high magnetic moment and if you apply the magnetic field so the opposite magnetic moment of the iron which is octahedral and tetrahedral site they share a net magnetic moment with the magnetic moment of iron at tetrahedral site so at compensation temperature, you can see here three magnetic moment of iron, which becomes equals to the magnetic moment of iron at octahedral and the dodecahedral side. So at that point, these two magnetic moment become equal. But at the above compensation temperature, since gadolinium is paramagnetic, so it will not contribute to the magnetic moment. So at that point, only iron contribution is there. And so the magnetic moment decreases and reach to the transition temperature. Transition temperature where the whole material become paramagnetic. It, below the ferrimagnetic transition temperature, the material is showing ferrimagnetic behavior, but above that temperature, it shows the paramagnetic behavior, okay? So, what are the challenges I have faced during the sample or uh, like what is the loophole in that sample which I have, which attracts me and to, uh, to do the particular property to do uh, for the application purpose. So, main thing is for in the multiferroic property or in the multiferroic material, the material should be centrosymmetric. Material should not be centrosymmetric, sorry. But these materials are centrosymmetric. What is centrosymmetric? If you, that means it has center of inversion. You may be studied in your solid that a material has centrosymmetric, that means center of inversion. That means if you look from the right hand side or the light, left hand side, it will have the same kind of property. Okay. And if you suppose apply some electric field, the both the sides will change in the similar way. So this sample has centrosymmetric and insulator. Okay, so I tried to break the centrosymmetric and to generate uh, the multiferroic or ferroelectric nature in these samples. So we have used, basically I've used the solid state root method. It is very simple and very uh, fundamental method you can, use in, you can use in the laboratory level. So where the oxides of the iron or yttrium we have mixed in some stoichiometric ratio. That means I want to prepare Y3Fe5O12. So in that ratio, I have mixed that. In the acetone medium, I have pre-sintered, annealed that sample at around 600 degrees Celsius. Then in the intermediate sintering, I have uh, like uh, make the pellets, grind it, break the pellets, then sintered it. So this is how in, with intermediate sintering, I have finally sintered the sample at 1400 degrees Celsius for eight hours. So at, at this particular temperature and hours, I have got the single phase material. What is single phase? That means that sample does not contain any impurity. Whatever peaks or whatever HKL planes or whatever cubic structure we want, we get that at that particular temperature. So we have characterized our sample with the help of extra diffractometer, which gives you the structural properties, then vibrating sample magnetometer and PPMS will give you the magnetic properties. 
FSM will give you this surface morphology and elemental composition. That means whatever stichiometric ratio we have done that is maintained at the final uh, sample. And then LCR imp impedance spectrometer have used to study the dielectric properties. These are the uh, uh, laboratories. Uh, these are the uh, uh, your apparatus instruments where I have collected the data. Okay, so this is the VSM. This is PPMS. So let's see the analysis what I have observed, and from these instruments. So these are the. This is the XRD graph. This is the XRD pattern. Uh, so. The rho XRD pattern is the observed one in the red symbols and the black one, which I have simulated. How do I simulated it? With the help of Ritweld refinement. Full proof software is there available and that will refine these, uh, this, this XRD pattern and you will see that there is no extra peak. This green line, which is, you can see here, these green lines are the break position. If the, there is any other peak in the material, it will show you here. So that means I can see the number of peaks and the number of lines are similar. That means there is no impurity in this material. This is in single phase. Okay, so the lattice parameter is quite high, which is 12.5476 angstrom. And as you increase the concentration of chromium, that means if you doped with higher concentration at the iron site, you will see that the radius will fall down. Why? Since I have said it is cubic, so that is where A, B, and C, these parameters are equal. So ionic radius will be increasing with the increase in concentration because chromium has lesser ionic radius as compared to the iron. Then I have studied the magnetic properties. I have told you because ferrimagnetic has spontaneous magnetization and it and it got saturated at the higher magnetic field. And since the coercivity is very less, we can say this gar garnets are soft ferrimagnetic materials. So as we increase the concentration, the magnetic moments also increases because chromium occupies the octahedral site in the material. Because as I've told you, the iron has two different sites. One is tetrahedral and one is octahedral. So uh, chromium occupies the octahedral site. And this one is the temperature variation of the magnetic moment. So temperature variation, as you increase the temperature, thermal randomization comes into the picture and your magnetic moment, whatever magnetic moment it is. So the thermal randomization overcomes it near the transition temperature. That is why it, the net magnetic moments falls down and it will give you the transition temperature. And you can see here, the black one represent the parent compound, which is the yttrium iron garnet and the, this the other symbols represent the chromium substituted one. That means I have doped the chromium at iron side. And we can see that Curie temperature is decreasing. I have also done the, to clearly observe the tr temperature, transition temperature, I have taken the first order derivative of magnetic moment and saw that. So it is decreasing. That means the super exchange interaction between iron at the octahedral and tetrahedral side is becoming weak. weak. Then we have done the impedance spectroscopy. So Nyquist plot is one uh, study which generally people or we can use to study their resistive nature, whether the material is how much resistant it is, how much like charge carriers are flowing from grains to grain boundaries. I hope you know grains are polycrystalline materials from forms with the grains. So you generally see, let me, one more time. Suppose this is the surface morphology of, so the material have, it is, I'm making it spherical shape or in a circular shape. So suppose this material surface morphology is something like that. So we can say this one is the grain one, the bigger one, and the boundary they are sharing, it is called grain boundary. And the charges will go here from one grain to the other grain through the grain boundaries. And if you suppose increase the temperature, the excess charges from the electrode, because when you do the impedance spectroscopy, you have to make the pellets and you have to coat it with the silver paint. So at the electrodes, some extra charges will be there. They will, if you increase the temperature, those charges will also accumulate over the grain boundaries. If suppose some the samples have some porosity, 
so they can go and sit near the green boundary so they also contribute to the uh, material so those so the, this this type of contribution we have observed the, at higher temperature but in the lower one your sample that means near the room temperature we have observed the whatever whatever is the sample property whatever resistance of the, the sample as you have increased the temperature the sample is becoming semiconductor in nature because the resistance is becoming decreasing because of the charge carrier movement from grains to grains through the grain boundaries and this some these uh, semicircular curves uh, analyzed with the help of another simulator which uh, is the z simpwin software and so this is the electric circuit which is fitted with this that means there is a contribution of green as well as green boundary in the sample but as you have increased the temperature only green boundary contribution occurs the, that means larger ch charge carriers are accumulated over here over the green boundary that is why more contribution coming from the uh, your green boundaries and green boundaries have, has lower resistance as compared to the green because sample uh, samples inherent nature is insulated and so, since we are increasing the temperature and semiconducting behavior is coming into the picture so that is why it is showing this complete semicircular curve okay from here to the origin whatever is the resistance so this will give you the resistance and in kilo ohm we can say it is semiconductor in nature okay so next i have another sample i have prepared with the samarium substituted and this sample shows the phenomenon property so is, first of all it shows the compensation temperature and apart from that uh, I, i'll show you just next slide apart from that it shows the again transition temperature and it, it is increasing because samarium strengthen the ferrimagnetic interaction how okay uh, you you must be thinking about how do we know the that interaction is strengthening okay so, so we have done the simulation from the since i have again and again repeating the strengthening the super exchange interaction between that means your bond between the iron at tetrahedral and iron at octahedral side that is becoming larger so if it is becoming larger the bond is getting stronger and stronger so you can see here for the parent one it is 126.2 degree and it is for the uh, another material that higher concentration it is 127.3 degree so that means with increasing in the concentration samarium substitution the con the bond angle is increasing that means it is strengthening the bond okay and that is why your magnetic transition temperature is increasing okay this is the same slide which represent this uh, increasing in the transition temperature and the compensation temperature decreasing the compensation temperature is decreasing because it is because you have substituting samarium and samarium has the lower magnetic moment and gilonium is very high magnetic moment if you have substitute some higher one with the lower one it will reduce the magnetic moment and because the magnetic moment is reducing that is why that is why your compensation temperature is going away from the room temperature so the interesting phenomena why i'm so i have said that we have observed the interesting phenomena in this material that we have observed so far i have observed the plane uh, to positive magnetic moment but in this particular sample for x is equals to 2.0 that means when i have substitute the more than half samarium in the gadolinium site that case in the field cooled position that means zero field cooled matlab aapne you haven't give the initial field to the uh, your sample and you have find out you have observed the magnetization temp variation with the temperature but now we have cooled the temperature with some ap applied field with a very low one 200 oster and that at that particular point we have seen that from 300 to 100 it is decreasing but below the magnetic compensation the magnetization becomes negative what happens at this point why it is not increasing up so since samarium iron samarium uh, atom has very high magnetic anisotropy that means it does not allow magnetic moment to align so because of this this magnetize this magnetic moment got freeze at this particular temperature and does not go 
with the with, with the above zfc that means it shows the negative one because of the high samarium ma magnetic anisotropy which does not allow to switch the magnetic moment of gadolinium below the compensation magnetic moment of gadolinium becomes switch in the up upward direction in the direction of applied magnetic field but since samarium is has very high magnetic anisotropy which does not allow to switch their magnetic field moment in the magnetic field direction that is why it is showing negative because of this negative magnetization people are studying so many different interesting phenomena magnetization reversal uh, exchange bias and those properties will be uh, studied for the magnetic memory storage random access memory is me we studied this kind of properties if some materials showing this property that they are eligible to make the memory devices okay so to check that whether this negative magnetization is really from the sample or from some this stray field because if you magnetize some material it has exhibit some inherent magnetic property also from the outside aisa bhi ho sakta hai na hamare aas pass koi mobile rakha hai ya fir some other magnet is keeping outside so that can also induce some magnetic moment so to check that we have again uh, check with in the reverse field whether in the reverse direction magnetic moment is flipping or not but it is not so that means we have observed the mirror image so that is why we have see, we can say that yes it is the sample property okay but at the at very high magnetic field like 500 oster to 600 oster that that much amount of field is required to switch the magnetic moment of samarium in the applied direction so that means this much amount of magnetic field is required to see the positive magnetic moment this is the room temperature magnetic curve which again shows it is ferry magnetic in nature okay next one also that as i have told you that the material is centrosymmetric so i have tried to break that centrosymmetric nature so with the help of bismuth substitution at gadolinium site i have tried to break the centrosymmetry so we i could succeed that so this is the fsm structure which shows that the proper grains a compact figure with less porosity for the parent compound but as you increase the bismuth your slight porous is porosity is there because bismuth substitution reduces the annealing temperature bismuth is uh, that means at high self prepared at very low temperature that is why it shows slight porosity at the uh, higher bismuth substitution and this is the edx spectra which confirms that the material i have substituted is substituted in the proper manner with no extra element is there only these uh, bismuth iron and gadolinium element and oxygen is there no extra element so how do i how, how do i say ki we have break the uh, centrosymmetric nature of the material because this material because this material shows the relaxer ferroelectric behavior and now there there may be a question uh, what is ferroelectric and what is relaxer ferroelectric so ferroelectric materials are very uh, similar to the ferromagnetic materials they ha they have spontaneous electric field electro elect polarization like magnetic pol magnetization but in the relaxer ferroelectric what happens if you increase the frequency dielectric materials your capacitor work if you apply some frequency to it okay so if the frequency is increasing the your transition temperature like in your ferrimagnetic or ferromagnetic there is single transition temperature if you whatever temperature you have apply whatever field you will apply the te transition temperature will remain same but in the relaxer ferroelectric if you apply the different frequency the transition temperature is changing why it is changing because bismuth forms small small polar regions that polarons jinko hum bolte hain so bismuth kya karta hai chote chote se ek chote chote areas mein polarons bana leta hai us us case mein kya hota hai those polarons won't saturate at particular temperature 
or at particular frequency. They will saturate as you increase the temperature. Suppose one polaron will saturate at particular frequency, the another one will saturate. And that the, and at the very high temperature, at very high frequency, all of them got saturated. So that is why you, this peak is shifting towards the high temperature side and, and with the change in frequency. So this type of behavior is known as relaxer ferroelectric type of behavior. And if it is ferroelectric, you will see this peak will remain constant at particular temperature and particular frequency. It won't change with the frequency, okay? So this shows the relaxer ferroelectric type behavior. And we have definitely, we have studied this with the, the maximum uh, temperature and the maximum frequency with the curie vis law. Curie law, you all know, in, for the, in the ferromagnetic materials. It is studied near the transition region, right? So similarly, we have studied here. So if the gamma is one factor which tells whether this is ferroelectric or uh, relaxer ferroelectric. So from the uh, linear fitting with the one by epsilon minus one by epsilon m versus the temperature. So we could see that this gamma factor, which is nothing but the diffusion of exponent, it is equals to two. And if it is equals to two, this value is equal to relaxer ferroelectric behavior from the data analysis or from the your uh, figure, we can straight away say the material is relaxer ferroelectric type behavior. That means we could induce ferroelectric nature in the material. That means we break the centrosymmetric nature somehow up to some con con uh, con constant, we have break the symmetric nature of the material. So what is the future aspect? This much I have done. And for the application purpose, we need to do some more because those are the parent compound, those are the solid materials. So for the uh, application purpose, we need to make the thin films and uh, different, different uh, on the different substitute and different substrate, different type of doping, different type of layers. So first of all, what is the future aspect? How can we use this kind of material in future or for the application purpose? So far, uh, so many scientists have done or whatever hard disk and uh, you are using for the memory devices, they are using electronic nature of the electron. All of you know that electrons have two types of behavior. One, it has, it has spin, it has a charge. So people are using the charge nature of the electron to study the electronic devices, to make the electronic devices or to make the memory devices. But in the garnet, it is insulated. It has no free electron, but it has electron. Insulator, it, it, any material, everyone has electron. So, but electron has another property, which is spin. So, so many scientists have discovered that the garnets can use the spin property of the electron to make, to be used in the memory devices. That means we can use the spin property of the electron to switch the, your, bits basically how you read the data zero and one zero and one zero and one this is how your computer read the data or write the data so with the spin properties because spin can be one or zero Na? half half spin hoti hai hai electron ki, plus half minus half so it can be zero it can be one so using the spin property we can read and write the data and and those materials which use the spin properties of electron, they can be fall in the category of spintronic device. And, and garnet is one of them. These days, HM iron garnet or any of the garnet is like highly suitable or highly chosen by the scientist to study the spintronic devices property. Another one is the magnetoelectric multiferroids. So multiferroic, as you can see, we can break the symmetry and we can induce the multiferroic nature. And this material initially is multi-electronic in nature, magnetoelectric in nature. So we can induce both the things, magnetoelectric multiferroics, and we can make the layers of it, one magneto, one ferroelectric material, one magnetic materials, and we can switch them, we can sandwich them, and we can make the material with the 
the help in suitable for the magnetoelectric recording, memories, sensor, and device, different kind of devices. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions? I cannot hear you. Hello, ma'am. Uh, thank Hello. you for being uh, My name is Sanskar Mishra, and uh, I am research scholar here and working on uh, topological materials. Ma'am, uh, uh, magnetic topological materials are also considered uh, as a good candidate of uh, magnetocaloric impact. So, yes. Uh, so, so uh, uh, what property defines uh, magnetocaloric effect? Suppose, uh, uh, what do we have to measure for proving something a good magnetocaloric candidate? Okay, first of all, it definitely has your compensation at any of the temperature. Nowadays, people are looking for the uh, materials which shows the lower magnetic compensation. That means below the 4 Kelvin, 2 Kelvin. What else you can measure is different at different temperature magnetic hysteresis curve basically okay okay ma'am at different uh, temperature if you observe the magnetic hysteresis your magnetic moment will change and there is if you read any of the paper so magnetic hysteresis how will you how will you study that material you can any of the read any of the magnetocaloric paper how the material the, the data you can analyze that is given in that but the data you have to take is at different temperatures which should be near the compensation, definitely should be near the compensation or near the fat transition temperature. You have to take the M versus H curve in that region. Okay, thank you. Actually, ma'am, we are in very primary state, so I thought to ask you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, no problem. There is a second question from the audience. Sandeep, Hello, ma'am. Hello. Myself, Sandeep Mariyadha. I am a scholar here. Ma'am, there is a question. Does oxygen vacancy play any role in dynamic properties? Yes, ex exactly oxygen vacancies because this material has iron, Fe3+. Okay, so if, if at very high temperature, if you centered at very high temperature, as I have centered this material at very high temperature, 1400, 1500, so at that temperature, oxygen vacancy is created by itself. And these oxygen vacancies created to balance the iron valency. That is why these material also has Fe3 plus Fe2 plus charge carriers. That is why this, this, what the polarons I have talked about, the polarons comes into the picture because of this Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus nature. Because bismuth does not have any stable balance valency. So the, this bismuth or counterpart these valency and oxygen vacancy is counterpart this valency. So that is why, uh, yes, at higher temperature, oxygen valency play, vacancy plays a vital role. Thank you. But oxygen vacancy is created only at when you center your material at very high temperature. At the lower temperature, oxygen vacancies generally don't create it. They create it only when you are centering your material, you are synthesizing your material at very high temperature. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yes. Right. Any other question from online audiences? Shivani. All right, Dr. Akansha, thank you so much. Uh, it thank was you, very thank you so much sir, for inviting me. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.